Sup guys, it's Alex here and welcome to the new Bracketology update. This one is for January 25th as you can see up there. Thank you guys for watching this video. I know this one is coming out super early. It's like 7.13 in the morning. I'm going to be working today until like 7 p.m. So the video would be coming out around 8 o'clock, 8 or 9 o'clock. I don't want that to happen. So I woke up early getting this video out for you guys. So hopefully you guys enjoy. Be sure to like and subscribe if you are new. And but if you are new or if you are just haven't watched the video in a while, I will be doing an NCAA tournament ticket giveaway if I reach 2,000 subscribers by March 1st. Right now, as you can see, it's January 25th and I'm at 1,856. Only 144 more to go and just over a month. I think you guys can do it. I think you guys can earn an NCAA tournament ticket. Once uh, I get to 2,000, I'll be doing a video describing how to enter for the giveaway and then I'll make a video giving it away to somebody. So hopefully we get to 2,000. Hopefully you, uh, the viewer, get to get the NCAA tournament ticket. It's a free ticket and uh, I'll just be giving it to you and you can pick whatever tournament site you want. And yeah, without any further ado, let's get into the video. So, uh, after another crazy week of college basketball to where uh, Tennessee almost lost to Vanderbilt, more on that to come, and just uh, some other upsets and big wins, Joel Lenardi has released his new Bracketology update, and as you can see, there's not a whole lot of movement just because it's weekday games, but there is some significant movement, and I'm just really excited for this weekend's games. They're going to be a good college basketball weekend, both Saturday and Sunday, and then a new Bracketology will probably come out on Tuesday. So, up here in the East Regional, Duke remains the number one seed. The only change is Mississippi State down to an eight after getting blown out by Kentucky. Then Iowa State remain, or is up to a 5. Maryland stays the same as a 4. Stony Brook is new to the field. Minnesota and Arizona State remain as the play-in games. Minnesota uh, did lose during the week, but they pushed number 2 Michi or two seed Michigan uh, down to the wire. It took a buzzer beater from Charles Matthews to win that game for Michigan. Villanova remains the 6. Houston is now up to a 3, which is crazy to think that Houston is a 3. But they've only lost one game this season. They're looking pretty good. South Dakota State with Mike Daum are up to a 14. Cincinnati just blew out Tulsa a couple days ago. They deserve to be up to a 7 seed. Kentucky remains a 2. And George Mason is new to the field. And down here in the West Regional, uh, we have Tennessee remaining the 1 after going to overtime against Vanderbilt. And they need, they were down by 6 points with like a minute to go and got a flagrant foul and got 4 free points. And that was just a mess of a situation. And Grant Williams got 43 points. Or 43 or 44, something like that, and went 23 to 23 from the free throw line, which is absolutely crazy. And TCU remains an eight. Florida State remains a nine. Purdue remains a five. Murray State lost last night by like 16 to Belmont at home. Uh, that was pretty sad to watch for John Moran and people like that. But they remain a 12 just because they're one of the best at large teams right now, even though that hurt them there. And then, or not at large, they're, they won. Their, they're the leaders of their conference right now. Then Louisville is up to a four seed. Chris Mack is just doing an amazing job with this program. I'm a Kentucky fan, but I got to respect what he's doing over there at Louisville. They beat NC State at home yesterday, and that moves them into the four seed, which many people weren't even expecting them to make the tournament this year. So props to Louisville there. Texas State is up to a 13 now. Loyola Chicago is down to a 14. They lost like 70 to 35 this week. It was really bad. They scored 11 points in the second half of that game. And then Ryder is up to a 15. Most of the seeds remain the same, as I mentioned earlier. Then up here, we got Michigan State remaining a 1. NC State is now down to an 8 after losing to Louisville, which now they'd have to play at Louisville if they advance to the Sweet 16 and Elite 8. That would be an interesting thing. Then Old Dominion is new to the field as a 12 since Marshall lost. I think that bumps Old Dominion to the top of the Conference USA for the time being. Marquette remains a 4. Bradford is now up to a 13 after they're really improving as a conference champion. They might even make it up to a 12 seed by the time uh, Selection Sunday comes around. Buffalo is now down to a 6 after losing the second game of the season against is either like Northern Illinois or Southern Illinois, something like that. It was only like a two-point loss, but they got to win those games. They can't, they can't be losing those game, in-conference games at this point if they want to remain a high seed. They are now down to a 6. Alabama is new to the field as a play-in game. Congratulations to them. They'd be playing VCU. Virginia Tech is up to a three. Bowling Green's into the field as well. Ole Miss and Ohio State remain the same. Same with Kansas and Princeton. Virginia is the remaining one seed playing in Kansas City. And then CSU Bakersfield is the 16 seed there. The Nebraska and Washington, those two teams haven't been too impressive so far, but they remain the eight and nine. Wisconsin is now up to a five. And Lipscomb is new to the field, even though I think they should have just been in there uh, regardless. It's just the way that the conference, whoever's leading the conference standings at that time that John already releases the bracketology is who is in the tournament. 
So, yeah, I mean, I think Lipscomb is the best team in the conference. They just got to stay at the top. Texas Tech is now down to a four after losing, like, three straight or something like that. They have no offensive identity at the moment. Northern Kentucky is up to a 13. Auburn is now down to a six after losing another game. This one to South Carolina. Seton Hall remains at 11. Nevada's a three. UC Irvine's new to the field as a 14. Kansas State has been absolutely killing it. They are now up to a seven seed. UCF, Fataco Fall, remain at 10. Michigan is a two, and Bucknell is a 15. So we'll take a look at the bubble. First four buys, Ohio State, man, they are killing themselves. Now they're finding themselves on the bubble. UCF and St. John's and Seton Hall are there as well. Last four in the playing games are Arizona State, Minnesota, VCU, and Alabama. First four out are Florida, Butler, Baylor, and Arizona, which for Baylor, being only three teams away from being in the tournament is an absolute success for the season. They haven't had a good basketball program in like four or five years, but they are turning around the season, exceeding expectations. I'm proud of them. I'm not really proud. <laughs> I'm not proud of them, but I mean, good to them. Arizona got blown out last night by USC. That's why they are now out of the field. San Francisco, Utah State, Creighton, and Temple are in the next four out. So without any further ado, as you guys know, uh, every time I do this bracketology stuff, I go on bracketify.com and create a bracket for you guys to go ahead and vote. The link to vote for this bracket will be in the description, so make sure you check that out. Like and subscribe if you are new. I got to do that plug right there. And let's go ahead and get into the bracketology and my predictions. So at first, we got Duke and the winner of Norfolk State and Sam Houston State, which I think, I don't really care who wins that. Whoever wins is going to lose to Duke. I think that's pretty obvious there. Mississippi State and Indiana. This is a, a matchup of two teams who are trending down right now. But I like Romeo Langford at Indiana playing. Mississippi State just looked lost against Kentucky. I like Indiana there. Iowa State, I think, will definitely beat Hofstra. I don't think that one will be close. Maryland will beat Stony Brook. Villanova will beat the winner of Arizona State and Minnesota, which I think, I know I trashed them last game Minnesota, but they impressed me against Michigan, and they only have like four or five losses on the season. I didn't realize that. So I think Minnesota will beat Arizona State, but I think whoever wins that game will rightfully lose to Villanova. I think Villanova gets the dub there. Houston will beat Mike Dom and South Dakota State. I really want to pick Mike Dom to win an NCAA tournament game at some point but I don't think it'll come against the three-seed Houston. Then Syracuse, I think, will beat Cincinnati with Tyus Battle, even though Cincinnati killed Tulsa. I just think Syracuse, they beat Duke. They they lost to Georgia Tech. I don't know what... <laughs> it's, it's Syracuse. It's NCAA tournament team Syracuse. They're the meme of the NCAA tournament. Then Kentucky's going to beat George Mason. Tennessee's going to beat Damian Lillard's alma mater, Weber State. And then um, Normally, I would pick Florida State to win. They were up to like a three or four-seed earlier this season, but they just look uninspired since that Duke loss uh, where they pushed them and uh, lost on a buzzer beater. I think they've lost every game since that point. But I'm going to pick T – that's why I'm going to pick TCU. They did beat Texas this week. And man, Florida State's just training downwards. Purdue will beat uh, Murray State as much as I want to pick Murray State right there with John Morant. The loss yesterday is by 16 at home to Belmont. It just, I still think they're a really good team, but I'm not as high on them as I was before that loss. I think Purdue and Carson Edwards get the, the dub there. Same with Louisville beating Texas State. At Iowa, I think, will beat Wofford. Wofford uh, won on a buzzer beater of their own last night. But I think Iowa, even though they lost to Michigan State by like 15 or so at, at home, I think that uh, they're a much better team than Wofford. The North Carolina is going to beat Loyola Chicago. I hate picking Oklahoma in the NCAA tournament. I don't really like them this season, but uh, I can't get behind St. John's right now. I think I know I've been high on them like during the season, but they haven't done enough to back that feeling up. I like Oklahoma there. Same with Gonzaga over Ryder. Michigan State will beat the winner of that playing game. I think NC State will beat Syracuse. They played Louisville pretty tightly up until the end. Then LSU, I think, will beat Old Dominion. Marquette will beat Radford. I know I'm not going with too many upset picks here so far. And I think that Alabama will beat VCU in that play-in play game. And then Buffalo will beat uh, Alabama. Virginia Tech will beat Bowling Green. I think Ohio State will beat Ole Miss. And then Kansas will beat Princeton. Then Vir Virginia will beat Cal, or Cal State or whatever it is, CSU Bakersfield. Then the winner, or Nebraska and Washington. These two teams, I just, I can't figure out. I mean, Washington was up by nine with like four minutes to go against uh, Oregon and then somehow blew that lead and then won on a cheap uh <laughs> They won on a cheap foul yesterday. Like The Oregon player just ran underneath the Washington player. Didn't even really touch him. But Washington got three free free throws and won that game by three. And Nebraska, I just I can't figure out Nebraska. They lose. They just lost to Rutgers, I think. So I'm just going to go with Washington. I don't really know what to do there. So then Wisconsin, I think, will beat Lipscomb. Though that could be an upset pick, another 12 over 5. But I don't think I have one of those this video. 
but I think Wisconsin and Ethan Happer are going to beat Lipscomb. Here's an upset pick right here. I'm going to go with Northern Kentucky beating Texas Tech. I know in reality, Texas Tech will probably win this matchup. They probably win like 94 or 95% of the time, but I'm going to go with one of those five or six times that they don't. Texas Tech is just does not have an offensive identity right now. They haven't uh, cracked 60 points in a while, and Northern Kentucky cracks like 80 points every game. I know it's playing a lesser competition than Texas Tech, but there's always upsets in the NCAA tournament, and I think Northern Kentucky gets it done against Texas Tech. And Auburn, I think, will beat Seton Hall. Nevada will beat UC Irvine. Kansas State with Dean Wade and uh, Bru Barry Brown. It's either Bruce Brown or Barry Brown. I think it's Barry. They beat UCF, and then Michigan will beat Bucknell. Then, uh, first spot in the Sweet 16, Duke will beat Indiana just like they did earlier in the season. I like Iowa State here, the 5 over 4 against Maryland. Houston, I think, will beat Villanova. I think these two teams are in the same, uh, I want to say they're in the same conference. I'm not 100% sure. No, they're not. Uh, I think Houston's in the American and Villanova's in the Big East. Yeah, they're not in the same conference. I'm going to go with Houston there, though. Then Kentucky, I think, will beat Syracuse. Tennessee will beat TCU. I like Louisville here over Purdue. I think they just played in football this past year. But I think that Chris Mack and his team are looking really good right now. I think they beat Purdue here to move on to the Sweet 16. North Carolina, I think, will beat Iowa. Then Gonzaga will beat Oklahoma. Michigan State will beat North Carolina State. Marquette with Marcus Howard, I think, beat LSU. With Nas out. They have some uh, really good guys. It's not Nasir Little. He plays for uh, North Carolina. I can't remember what his name is, though. <laughs> Then Vir Buffalo and Virginia Tech. I got Virginia Tech right here, and no surprise there. Uh, Kansas over Ohio State. Virginia over Washington. Uh, Wisconsin and Ethan Happ over Northern Kentucky, as much as it pains me to pick them. Then Nevada and uh, Caleb, Mar the Martin Twins, not just Caleb. I think they beat Auburn there. Auburn just hasn't been looking good this season. And then Kansas State and Michigan. As much as I want to pick Kansas State because they're looking pretty hot right now, I got to go with Michigan there because uh, they're a better team than uh, Kansas State at this point. Then first spot in the Elite Eight, Duke and Iowa State. Got to go with Duke. They're a lot more talented right now. Same with Kentucky over Houston. Tennessee and Louisville. I'm going to go with an upset pick here. I'm going to go with Louisville. Tennessee has been struggling a little bit. They forced over. They went to overtime with uh, Vanderbilt this week, and then they almost went to overtime with Alabama. They almost lost Alabama on Saturday if Alabama hadn't turned the ball over with like three seconds to go. I mean, they're a number one overall. Uh, they're a number one seed right now. But, and I know I picked them a couple of bracketologies ago to like win the whole thing, but they haven't been too impressive. If Grant Williams or Admiral Schofield uh, don't show up for a game, they're toast. And I think that Louisville has enough. No, Louisville doesn't really have a standout player. They're a collection of uh, really good players and they play as a team. I like them getting the upset over right here. Then North Carolina and Gonzaga. I know last video I picked North Carolina to win because they beat Gonzaga earlier this season. But I'm going to go with the two seed here. I like Gonzaga moving on. And Michigan State and Marcus Howard, I really like uh, Marquette and Marcus Howard, but I'm going to go with Michigan State. They're a much better team at this point. They just proved that with the road win over Iowa. And I think that Kansas will beat Virginia Tech. Virginia will beat Wisconsin. And then Michigan, I think, uh, will overcome the experience of uh, the Martin Twins and stuff like that to beat Nevada. Duke and Kentucky. I think Kentucky's turning it on right now. I think uh, They've only lost three games a season. One was that 34-point loss to Duke, and the other two were by a combined three points. So, I mean, they haven't really – they haven't lost a game by more than – or by three or more since uh, the Duke game. And uh, While I think this game will be uh, a lot closer than 34 points, I just don't see it happening. I think that Duke gets the victory over Kentucky, though. If Kentucky keeps winning, I mean, I might pick them against Duke eventually. And Louisville and Gonzaga for a spot in the Final Four. We got Gonzaga moving on there. I think they're just a better team than Louisville at this point. And then Michigan State, I think, will beat Kansas. And then Virginia, I th think, will beat Michigan. And then for a spot in the National Championship game, Duke and Gonzaga, Gonzaga these two teams played earlier in the season. And, and Gonzaga won. And just like how I did with North Carolina and Gonzaga, I'm going to pick the team who lost here. I think Duke moves on and to the National Championship game. Michigan State and Virginia, I think this one will be an interesting battle. These two teams find a way to play each other in the tournament a lot. And I can't, I just can't pick Tony Bennett's team to move on to the national championship game at this point. And they're looking pretty good, but Michigan State's looking even better. To set up a national championship game of Duke and Michigan State, as much as I want to see Duke go down and see Michigan State win, they're my second favorite college basketball team behind Kentucky. I think that Duke's going to win there. Tom Izzo just can't beat uh, Mike Krzyzewski at this point. I think and plus Duke is just more talented, but Cassius Winston and Michigan State, they could pull off the upset, but I just don't see it happening here. I got Duke winning that, so thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like and subscribe if you are new. Leave a comment below on who, uh, what you think about this bracketology and in the, in the season so far. 
Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you all later.